Hello, everyone. Welcome to DG360. It's pretty amazing to be here, by the way. I just want to say it's pretty, pretty amazing. I don't think there's any other place that you can chill that's uh, a more fun time. Like, literally, there isn't. Uh, it's not out there, especially not on Montoya's channel. Oh, <laughs> oh just teasing Montoya. I actually dig Montoya. Uh, Montoya is going to talk about Star Atlas mostly dead. Now, you guys know I'm a big fan of the Web3 space. You know, I do like crypto. I see utility in some of the cryptos and blockchains out there. I see it. I see the purpose of it. I see the evolution of it. Uh, thinking that it's not going to happen uh, is a little bit naive. Uh, it's like pretending that Blockbuster wasn't going to go out of business when Netflix uh, arrived. <laughs> I still go to Blockbuster, don't I, Pepe? Oh, is there one left? I think there's one Blockbuster left, actually. But anyway, Montoya is going to tell us that, you know, he, he came out with a video uh, a month or so ago we watched here on the channel talking about how Star Atlas is dead. And, you know, you had that big FTX crash with Sam Bankman fraud. Uh, and he basically tanked uh, the entire crypto market because he was running scamazes. And he had really crazy uh, leaders of his uh, Alameda branch, uh, branch off uh, trading company. They were doing pretty heinous things behind the scenes. And it just rocked the entire crypto world. Well, lately, crypto has been pumping. Uh, and, you know, these it's all cyclical. Nothing's going to go to zero in crypto. The only threat that I see is, like, really heavy-handed regulation by America, uh, by po politicians. And I think that would stifle innovation, and it would move the epicenter of world trade to a city that is not in America. So we have to be very careful how we tread here. We are a land of innovators. We are a land of, of uh, re re rebels. We're freedom fighters. <laughs> We're a land of, of imagination uh, in a democracy that can flourish. Uh, creation, innovation uh, come from the most free countries in the world. Uh, if you live in a dictatorship, what you'll see is that usually government and people in power stifle that innovation uh, with overregulation and over law <laughs> and, and kill you and cram their fist down their, your throat till you don't have an imagination left unless they tell you, you you can. And that's why I love America. For all its cracks and its flaws, we're still a country of innovators. We're still a country of big dreams. And a, our hope is dying because of really bad leaders. We have to be more involved in the process and we gotta, we gotta really make sure it counts. Uh, so I applaud everybody that gets involved in it. It's part of being an adult. <laughs> Get out there and actually vote in some smart motherfuckers instead of these shady, these shady people. And I'm talking about Rep Republicans and Democrats. I'm lumping them all together. I'm neither right nor left. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I make my own path. I, I vote for the guy who makes the most sense and seems genuine. It's not a big uh, landscape of those types of uh, gentlemen and ladies out there running for office, but they're out there and there is still hope. But let's get to see what Montoya says about Star Atlas being mostly dead because he said it was dead, by the way. Montoya, you said that Star Atlas is dead. I get what you're doing. You're trying to get those clickety clacks. <laughs> it's okay. But here's the thing. It's still here in a bear market. I don't know if they're going to survive or have the well with all the fortitude, the financial fortitude to, to weather this storm. But if they do, they will come out the other side stronger. Any company in, in this market, in this bear market, in the dark financial times that we are seeing can build through these moments and get through them and come out the other side are stronger. This is the cycles of the, these are the cycles of the market. The market will basically show you the fraudsters, the market will slice and dice them and get them out and spit out the people who aren't trying. They're not going to, the market will not favor those people that aren't putting their all in it. So during these bear market times, you get to see who the winners are. You get to see that the people who are going to get through this and survive through this are only going to get stronger. And after that cycle fades off, after the bear market sloughs off and the bull market comes back, because this is cycles, fear, you know, right now, fear uh, is, is the more overpowering f emotion. But greed is that other one. <laughs> and we're, we're seeing a pump in the market. You can see here on this chart, 
I believe he has the Bitcoin chart up. I'm not quite sure. I can't see it. Uh, but, but we're seeing a break of resistance that has been in effect since November 11th, 2021. We have gone through literally, I think, 14 months of down, like literally. It's been just down, 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 down. And crypto has been slammed as well, worse than the stock market because it's a new risky, it's, a, it's, it's the Wild West right now, right? But there are certain blockchains out there and crypto out there this, that have utility. Bitcoin, Bitcoin being the almighty God coin, uh, Bitcoin, uh, really, if you go down that rabbit hole, you're going to have a good time with it. Let's see what Montoya says about Star Atlas being mostly dead. Uh, I was, I'm telling people that, you know, back in when everybody was saying Star Atlas was dead to get those clickety clacks, that it's not and that it shouldn't be associated with FTX uh, or, or uh, Scamazes. These are people who are working on a project. It is happening. Uh, it, it has that flavor of how Cloud Imperium started out. Uh, and, uh, it, it, here's the thing. They're using unreal engine five. I'm a big fan of unreal engine. Uh, I like the looks of it. Uh, but yes, they're using new assets, uh, uh that are preloaded into unreal engine. They're using basic assets and they're selling them, uh, in star Atlas. So I'm told, uh, I have no proof of that, but I, I have people who are telling me that they're using, uh, basic, uh, basic game assets in the engine and just putting them out there to sell. I, I don't necessarily believe that wholeheartedly, uh, but that is the, the, the phase that Star Atlas is at. It's at the beginning money collection phase. Star Citizen was at that phase, right? Star Citizen, everybody said was a scam. They're still saying it, which is crazy to me. Star Atlas, a lot of people are calling it a scam because of crypto. But I would say this, in the Web3 space, I, I'm, I think Star Atlas is where I put my money. I think Star Atlas is where I put my money for, it, it might fail, it might fail. But let's see what Montoya has to say, since I've talked so much. It's time to check on our favorite NFT project, Star Atlas. Now, I took a lot of heat on my previous video on this topic. If you don't know what Star Atlas is, I'll fill you in in a second. But basically, they want to create a space game kind of Star Citizen-like. Uh, in fact, they're copying Star Citizen very, very closely. They are. But using NFTs to fund it, and it's all crypto-related with their own token. But, but also, my, my criticism with that, and, and again, I, I will say this, in the sci-fi realm, there's, there's copying abound. And you'll see variations of similar science fiction ship models. This is this is pretty normal. This isn't just a Star Atlas thing. It's it's also a Star Citizen thing. It's also a Star Wars thing. It's like, you know, it's also a Battlestar Galactica thing. It's also a Buck Rogers old school if you want to go real far back. These these uh, when everybody screams about copying other like models of spaceships, I laugh. Like there are certain like designs set in our in our brains that are 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 solidified as what these ships will look like. And they've you've seen the evolution of the shapes throughout the the decades of science fiction movies uh you know and, and so like when people say oh this guy's copying off this guy this the only time i really think that is if it like looks so similar like we did watch the new star atlas concept uh, uh ships being being put out there and one of them looked like an argo ship like almost literally identical until you went outside there are exceptions where people actually do copy it, <laughs> like like copy it, copy it. But mostly in the science fiction realm, give me a break, man. I mean, like a lot of these designs are are shareable. A lot of these designs are are forever, and and will forever be evolved upon or or modified upon. Like really token called atlas now i took a lot of heat on a video i made two months ago saying star atlas is dead rip star atlas and uh, the reason i made that video was at the time there were victims of the ftx implosion now if you don't follow right. crypto too closely right. ftx was a, a major exchange like the second largest exchange in the world yep. which went under now star atlas had 15 million half their money half their purse Ugh. 
15 million dollars was at FTX oh, and poof it is gone. Oh, the- oh my god. Good good data. Good data. I did not know that Montoya 50 million on the FTX exchange completely wiped out so many. I feel so sad for all the people that were using FTX, man. So many people were shilling out FTX as a platform. So many people got burnt in their money, literally stolen from FTX, from Sam Bankman fraud. Oh, my God. It, here, Even the developer. Why would you keep $50 million on an exchange? Are, like, what the fuck? This is, the, again, Michael Wagner. I've said this. This is the, the CEO of Star Atlas. What the fuck, dude? Like, come on, dude. What are you keeping $50 million in assets on a uh, on an exchange? Who does that? Perhaps they lost the value in the token itself. Perhaps it wasn't just swindled from their exchange. God, I thought for a second. Now I'm starting to rethink this because I partied way too hard last night. You know what they had it in? They had it in FTX token. And then, poof, there went the value of FTX token. They, they owned the, the fucking token. They owned $50 million of FTX token, and the FTX token went to nothing. Whew. That feels bad. That feels bad. 50. I think he said 50. Yeah. $50 million. Whew. Right? You should diversify. <clears throat> what is going on for a, for a game that wants to be like on the edge of the Web3 crypto world, right? How do the people, for, for the major criticism of Star Atlas is the fact that they're way too financial and think about only the, the trading aspect of the game, right? And not about the game itself. And here you have this, this mindset where they're only focused on the financials and the crypto and they fuck up that bad. Wow. Wow. That's sloppy to have 50 million in one coin. Ridiculous. Maybe they maybe they had a contract. Maybe they were like contractually bound to FTX somehow to own that token because FTX was doing that. Sam Bankman was doing that. He was dealing out his own token. He was like, oh, you want some cash? Oh, well, I don't have the cash, but I have the FTX token. Here you go. Here's here's <laughs> here's a million FTX token. And he just, you know, printed up his tokens and there you go. He sent them out like <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. That is horrible. That is the worst possible scenario you can have uh, at is a company 15? in it's early 15. development. Okay. I thought he said And 15. the CEO himself, uh, Michael bad. Wagner, CEO, came out and put a long statement about explaining why it was there. And, uh, you know, a lot of people bashing him saying, hey, they're stupid. But listen, understand, a lot of people got burnt on FTX. Tons. Not stupid people. Because yes, what happens right. is FTX right. would actually donate money or lend money and then say, hey, keep your money on our exchange where you can earn 3 4 5% right, on staking. the money just sitting right, there, right. which is why people just... Yeah, yeah. there's two reasons why they lost the $15 million. A, they either had $15 million worth of FTX token that went to nothing, or they had that much on the exchange. Maybe they had $15 million on the exchange. Those are the two reasons. Maybe Montoya will tell us which the reason is kept the money on the exchange, and I'm sure that's the reason why Michael Wagner kept a lot of money on the exchange too. So when FTX imploded and everyone lost their money, he came out and said, you know what, this is bad, here's a story, he put a, a nice letter about it explaining, but also there was about 1.5 years, or the estimations were nine months to one and a half years of runway left over. So $15 million, Let's even this out. Let's give a round number. Let's say $15 million was enough for one year of development. What this- Yeah, they only have nine months left of capital to keep them floating. They're going to have to, be, to turn on the afterburner, and they're going to have to make up that loss. And they're, they're, you're going to see a lot of production from this, actually. You know, as, as shitty as this is going to sound, this probably was one of the best things that could ever happen to them because it's going to light a fire under their ass, and it's going to make them have to work and pump out content. They're going to have to pump out the ships they're gonna have to get that cheddar machine going seriously this means is if they bring in no new money if star atlas today stopped making money they would run out of money within a year so the video i put out was basically saying hey uh, this project is dead at the time in november and december it's not dead. they it's... were putting up ship sales nothing was saying they're trying to sell these big titan ships for a million dollars in yeah. a reverse i i 
and by the way, we got a highlight of that on the channel. Shame on them. A million dollars, man? Like, like a million dollars. It's so scamazi feeling, by the way. Like, that just, like, does not. Shame. Like, you're not doing Shame. any good for your project by having a million dollar digital spaceship. Just doesn't, like, to me, that just screams scamazi. I love the Web3 space. I love crypto. But when you're hitting million dollar digital goods, there's some point at me inside. I just, it twists and turns my heart. And it's like, ah, stop that it just screams scamaz this dutch it's auction which makes no Star sense uh no one's been gonna, gonna cough up a million dollars in the midst of a bear market and the fact that the price kept going up the longer you wait yeah. doesn't make people rush in and buy it so they sold no new ships and i was looking at the numbers and said guys yeah this project is not selling ships and they lost all this money and they themselves said they have a year of runway left that's bad because games take a long yep. time to make. It's yep. a complicated process. Now, yep. I'm going to actually. And their only way out for them is to pump out crazy amounts of ships. They're going to have to like continuously just push out ship after ship after ship after ship, man. And they better hope they sell. And you better not price them at a million bucks, man. Going to come out in defense of Star Atlas <laughs> right, about a couple right of things fingers. very soon. But uh, <laughs> when Astral. the data changes, you should be able to change your mind. And so as you can see by the thumbnail of this project, uh, it's not quite dead yet because <laughs> they actually went and raised $2 million okay. over the past right. two months. That's I'm going to write here. So though. I was curious to know. How much money are they pulling in? Now, you can go Good. and dig up the contracts because it is on the blockchain and see what they've been pulling in. Awesome. But here we have uh, a character called, a character, a person named Vainzilla. I'm assuming this is legit because no one seems to be questioning it on Reddit, saying uh, he or she is a community manager at Star Atlas and they've raised $2 million. That's nothing. $2 million is nothing in the gaming world, man. It's just, it's a serious uh, nothing burger. Like, $2 million is not that much. But it's good that they're focusing on bringing in that cheddar. They need to do it to, to survive. They literally need to do it in to survive. In the last two months. So, good. Now I see a number at least. <laughs> so, first of all, to the person that came into my live stream <laughs> and insisted I did not know what I was talking about because no, they Montoya made $5 million dollars last this. month. You listen, are Listen, uh, like, there's very few content creators that talk about uh, Web3 blockchain that I listen to in the gaming world because most gamers, unfortunately, aren't very well versed or haven't taken the time to really research what it is. In fact, the reason why it's so cool and that you can look up this data is, is it's on a an online ledger the cool thing about blockchain is it's totally visible and there's no third party attached the reason why this is going to take uh DeFi, which is decentralized finance is going to take away uh c which is legacy centralized finance the reason why DeFi is going to take over is because there is no third party it cuts out the banks crypto the real tangible value of crypto is it cuts out out the banks why do you think the politicians want to get in there and ruin everything because they're controlled by the people who have the money and the banks are telling the politicians you better do something about this because we're going to lose our system <laughs> and there will be it will come to a head and I am really really excited uh, the next 10 years are going to be very exciting in this world very exciting are a liar and there's no reason to lie <laughs> about star atlas on these topics because it's all in the blockchain you can check right. ourselves but this is coming straight from i'm assuming is legit community I, manager I'm, I'm all for regulation i do want them to come in and regulate yeah i'm all for the government actually coming in here i am an adult i absolutely agree with you um crystal crystal king says honestly i prefer government oversight I do too, but I want it in a smart, logical manner. And I really feel like a lot of the politicians out there are just going to go in heavy handedly, uh, over regulate as the government tends to do, stomping all over it. And they're going to stifle the innovation. And people in the States, people in America are, are going to be that are interested in this are going to go to other countries because the American politicians are going to over regulate heavy handedly. And, and that innovation, that creation, it's got use. It's, we already gave you one use case for it. There's multiple use cases for crypto and, and blockchain uh, tech. There's, there's so many. Uh, that's just one of them. I just think that, the, that while I want that regulation, I know the U.S. politicians are going to mess it up. I just know they are. That's what they do. 
from Star Atlas saying, we've made two million in the last two months. That's one million per month. All right. So based upon that, based upon the fact that they're pulling in a million a month, can this project continue to survive? And the answer to that is yes. Okay. Look, I don't. Maybe you guys don't want to hear it, but uh, the truth is, yeah. <laughs> look, if you bring in the money, He's just pause because I want to look at this with you. I like, I like uh, as like. a star citizen backer, I can tell you the following. Yeah. If the money's coming in, yep. And you have the talent, yep. And you have the people right. working there that can Still do it. Still a drop in the bucket, then though. They can need do more it, than but that. it's just going to take a long, long time. Yep. So they may have been spending one point five, two, three million a month as their burn rate. But after FTX, I'm pretty sure, and I don't know if this is true or not, if someone's following the project more closely than me, please be happy to chime in below. I'm pretty sure they chopped down staff as much as they can go. I'm they pretty did. sure they're on a skeleton crew. Uh, that's, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do in these rough times. Everybody's doing it. Amazon's laying off people. Microsoft's laying off people. Walmart's laying off people. Uh, a lot of the big tech giants are laying off people. There's there's layoffs everywhere. Those, those, those will show in the unemployment numbers. You're going to see a big spike in unemployment here shortly uh there will be a recession officially announced biden's gonna have to say hey uh i can't i can't say that we're not in a recession anymore because the unemployment numbers will skyrocket we'll go into a recession people are gonna lose their shit uh the market will will there will be a bloodbath will be one last final bloodbath capitulation down like i know we're getting this like really nice pump right now i don't know how long it's going to last maybe maybe we did see the bottom i know we're damn close to it i know we're damn close to the bottom i smell it i can smell it there is slight blood on the streets the theater is on fire uh, but we, we haven't gotten to the point where it's a raging inferno yet. What I'm doing is I'm sitting in the theater on fire. I'm sitting in the theater on fire, impervious. My skin made of an alum, aluminum uh, material, aluminum, uh, <laughs> titanium, if you will, polished, shiny, titanium DG dome set on fire in the theater. I'm sitting in the theater watching people freak the fuck out, running out the entrances and ex exits now. They're exits. They were entrances when it was greedy time. Now it's fear time. And people were running out. We're seeing a little spike now. We're seeing a little spike now. Like we saw Montoya talk about at the beginning. I don't know, but I know we're near. I, I feel like we're close to a bottom. Not financial advice, but what I'm doing is I'm slowly starting to DCA. Dollar cost average into stocks and cryptos slowly slowly all the money that i'm making here all the money that i'm making in doordash all the money that i can collectively get because i'm an entrepreneur and i hate working for other people making other people money which makes me have to doordash <laughs> all of it that i'm trying to accrue all those pennies all those little pennies, right what i'm doing is i'm slowly and methodically dcaing into stocks and crypto like tesla I'm getting into Bitcoin, I'm getting into Cardano, I'm getting into Solana, I'm getting into the blockchains that I, I'm getting into those cryptos. I think that they, they have utility and I'm going methodically and slowly. I'm not pumping it all in. I'm not pushing it all in. I'm going smartly at levels that show resistances and support. That's where I'm pushing in my orders at. And I'm slowly going and I'm sitting in this theater that's on fire and I'm watching everybody run out the exits and I'm laughing to myself. Because I know eventually five years, maybe even 10, <clears throat> right? That everything I'm doing right now, all the amount of energy that I'm putting into amassing some type of purchasing power and, and, and wealth, <laughs> I am taking that and I am going to slowly dollar cost average into uh, this, the companies and the crypto that I believe in. Not financial advice. Not financial advice, just telling you guys what I'm doing. Star Atlas, in the Web3 world, I feel still, with all this drama and everything going on, I still think is the best bet. I think it's deplorable what Michael Wagner did getting in a Twitter debate. or con Well, it wasn't even a debate. It was just like flaming on Twitter to our friend the Eradicator. Horrible. Un <laughs> It was just ungentlemanlike. Like, I don't want to see that from a CEO. I didn't like that. Our, that put a bad taste in my mouth when Michael Wagner uh, got into it with the Eradicator. Literally. Like, who does that? This is ridiculous. It was on Erad's second channel, I think, too. It was like 2,000 subscribers he had at the time. And Michael Wagner gets into it 
with the Eradicator puts a copyright strike on his video for just talking about it, where Erad was expressing his opinions. He had 1.4 thousand subscribers. So already deplorable to me. Deplorable. Can't even believe he took the time out of his day to do that. I don't want to. I don't want a CEO of a project that I feel has some gravitas to it taking the time out to pick on a YouTube content creator that has 1.4 thousand subscribers. He got him to 1.6. Dude, that's good. That's good. That's why you're killing it right now, Erad. That's why you're killing it, dude. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, the game is outsourced to a company called Sparasoft, who I think was paid ahead of time. But as far as everyone else working on this, I'm pretty sure they've paid it down to the essential personnel only to keep the burn rate yep. as low as possible. Yep. And what Star Atlas needs to do is simply push out as much content yeah, as they can absolutely. to bring in exactly new buyers or new people they to find. So if they the bring ships, in man. a million a month, then yeah. So take a look at this. Just it looks like Argo. Play. It looks like this is the one I was saying looked like an Argo ship. It's beautiful. It is. This ship reminds me very much of Argo <laughs> ships in Star Citizen. My toy is great, dude. Argo Raft to be particular. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's possibly the same dev in Star Citizen that may have done this for them also. It's it's good design and they're doing interiors now. And they're they're also supporting VR. That content's gonna hit the channel this weekend. We're gonna see some VR in Star Atlas, which is, you know, that's awesome. I want that. I want that in a sci-fi game. The the station that we saw was a little subpar. It was a little too small. That's what she said. Oh, <laughs> she did all the time. I hate it. Uh, but listen, back to the video, back to the video. Damn also, it. let me mute because there's irritating talking going on now. But uh, uh, also a misconception I heard in uh, DG360, if you're watching, you said this yourself, and <laughs> I have to correct like you on that, this. Dude. There are no Star Citizen employees, ex-employees working at Star Atlas. What Star Citizen does is they hire, they contract out devs to make the ships. Once the ship is made, there's no need for further services from that person. Cool. That's why they contracted. Now, if you're an independent contractor, anyone can hire you. So what happens is Star Atlas has actively gone and seeking, they're seeking out yep. former Star Citizen ship contractors, ship devs, and paying them say, hey, come make a ship for us. Yeah, that's capitalism. People that get pissed off at that, it's, it's ridiculous that people are getting pissed off at that, man. People have to make money. In the, in the real world, you need it. It's important for things like food. <laughs> and this is what we see. Now, I this don't know if this is what uh, Dev made this or if, <laughs> right, if it right, is a Red former Star like, Citizen Dev. Like, but the, who, who are these people that get angry? I feel like they're kids, man. I feel like they're kiddos sitting up in their room playing video games all day. They don't realize the value of a dollar. They've never gone out and done anything in their life to realize that you actually have to live out there and, and actually make money, right? The people that are getting mad at this are people that literally are kiddos in their rooms or, or adult kiddos that are in their rooms <laughs> smoking pot every single day and not doing anything with their life but like wasting them in video games which you know what is a good thing to do i'm applauding you uh, smoking pot <laughs> and playing video games is what keeps the lifeblood of dg360 alive god bless you keep smoking your pot and keep playing video games design language is pretty damn close <laughs> and i also want to point out how beautiful the interior the textures the lighting you got to give it to Unreal 5. And I've spoken <laughs> about this in depth also in previous videos. Unreal 5 makes things look beautiful very easily. For Star Citizen to get it, this it level of uh, lighting and textures in, that you hire this a team. This is VR, by they the way. hired people. I don't know if Montoya knows this or not, but this is actually in VR right now. So, like, that's another major plus with the project is they're supporting VR uh, uh, plugins. And to it's, come it's do great. this. In Unreal 5, you go, here's my light source. Uh, here's the material oh, shining one. Click a button, bam, uh, it's uh, all done for you. <laughs> this is what you get from modern gaming engines. So I was one of the people who was very, very impressed with the quality of the animations and uh, everything Oof. you see coming out of Star Atlas. Dying but as explained in pot. previous videos, Ridiculous. Uh, that's just the state of gaming in terms uh, <laughs> of... This is like crazy that e -Red said this. I can't imagine a world in which I would live in where like people are sentenced to death for smoking pot. That that is so anti, like free love vibe, man. Like you know, like have you ever met anybody who is high off pot, who is a mean guy? Like they, like like literally. Could you imagine a dude who smokes pot in Taiwan? 
where where Erad lives. And then they're like, all right, we're taking you off out there to the Huskow. We're going to kill you. We're going to put you up on a wall and shoot you. And you're like, no, man, really? You got to be kidding, man. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we are really going to kill you for smoking pot. Oh, man, that's a bummer, man. <laughs> like, that would be crazy. That would be crazy. Of uh, what Unreal 5, what modern game engines can do these days. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a de definite no-no. That is a definite no-no. You're right, Astral. I'm not endorsing that at all. I'm not endorsing that at all. Oh, you can be impressed, but this brings us on to more it was important just a joke. issues. It was just and a that joke. Is, once the game so is little. made, and no doubt it's beautiful, I mean, take a look at this. That has landing gear, like this calico head tech. All right. It can be probably, probably, right, yeah. This is the ship movement, the way things fold up and down. This is straight out of Star Citizen type design, which is what they need to do. There's no reason for Star it's, it's not that that's that's Montoya's bias, I think. I I don't there are some ships that look like a lot like Star Citizen ships, right? Uh, you know, I've seen it myself, but you know, not every ship is a star citizen ship. Uh, I think Montoya has just been in star citizen for so long that, you know, everything looks star citizen to him. And as somebody who's been in star citizen just as long, I have that same issue. For <laughs> Atlas to have to, uh, find things out through trial and error. Uh, they can simply see what star yeah, has its like tradition that. That in the crypto such, world. That is such basic UI, by the way. I hate that. I, I don't like that setup right there. The, I get it. It's in baby face. Like, here's the thing that I'm trying to get people to realize about Star Atlas. Star Atlas is where Star Citizen was in 2014-ish. Like, Star Atlas is basically where Star Citizen was in terms of development in 2014. But with UE5, they're going to be able to accelerate the the development on a level it's like it's like steroids they're going to be able to enhance this and, and develop this quite quickly with ue5 compared to what's going on uh with cloud imperium uh but i hate this ui right here it looks so sloppy you don't need new ideas and just do what someone else is doing right kiddie. and uh, that's basically what they've done here is they say we've seen everything star citizen has done let's copy that and that's exactly what's happening there and you can't fault them for it I mean, it is working, right? Uh, so a lot of, I, okay, so I said I was going to say something nice about Star Atlas. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, a lot of people complaining that, oh, look, it looks arcadey, or there's a demo of a guy flying around without a helmet in space, it's or the, the movement phase. looks janky. Or it's the beginning phase. It's the beginning phase of the project. It's all the beginning phase of the project. Oh, the the graphics uh, the graphics look great, but the flight model What's is up, weird. Nate? Look, this is all very, very early night. alpha. Awesome. It is all alpha stage. And what Star Atlas needs to do at this point in time is spit out as much information and as much yes. demos yes. and as much eye candy as they can yes. to attract in more buyers. But but on a but on another on a on a truth bomb level, I've talked to the developer, uh, one of the uh, the community manager actually, and I've told him that they need to portray what it is that they're doing business wise. Uh, you know, where we get to see the employees, where we get to see what's happening. You know, if they don't have a centralized office and it's remote, that's fine. Get your employees, uh, keep the video short and sweet, right? Talk about where it is that you're at. Be super transparent. This is the type of uh, quality content I want to start seeing. And and what I noticed with Star Atlas is they're starting to do it. It's they're they're off the mark a couple times, uh, and I'm always the guy who's watching the video saying this is how you can do things better, constructively giving them uh, the criticism they need so that they can continue to make it better. And that's really the cool thing about this channel here. A lot of people say, oh, there's no influence here. Like if you're a content creator, uh, you're not an influencer. There's so many content creators that are saying they're not influencers out there. That's a bunch of bullshit. We're all influencers. We're mouthpieces. We're talking, we're giving our opinions and we're telling you what it is that we think. And some of you will gravitate to it. Some of you will disagree with it. My opinions here on Star Atlas, I'm sure there's plenty of you out there that disagree with what it is I'm saying, but we are influencing the project just talking about it. That's just part of the dialogue that we're having right now. We're talking about what we want to see from the game. We're influencing people to go in certain directions. People that are content creators that say they're not influencers obviously don't understand that they are. They are influencers. The more, the more people gravitate to you, right? We've got 33 viewers here right now. I'm expressing my opinions, right? You, we're, we're, we're having a debate. 
We're, we ha we're having a dialogue. We're influencing people. We're, that's what we're doing. When people are watching us right now, we're influencing people, not just other viewers sitting at home, watching on their phone. Perhaps you're a Chipotle. Per per perhaps you're eating a delicious uh, Chipotle bowl like I want to do now because uh, I partied way too hard and Chipotle bowls work so perfectly after such a, a crazy party night. Uh, perhaps you're watching now, but we're all influencing we're all influencing. There's many of you now that want to go to Chipotle and get a Chipotle bowl. This stream has been sponsored by Chipotle. That's right. Hi, have you had yourself a delicious bowl of Chipotle today? That's right. Mmm, that cilantro rice, those black beans, that chicken that you put on there. Some of that tomato salsa that's delicious. How do they do that? It tastes so good. That cheese, oh my God. Wait, no, no, no. I told people I would not shill. I told people I would never shill. But I'm trying to make my point here. I'm influencing you. This, like, like, come on, man. We, we are smart people here. We know what's going on. When we're talking about these things, every little thing might influence you in a certain direction. But it's not just the people sitting at Chipotle. It's also the developers. That's the cool part. We do have an impact. How many things have we talked about in Theorycraft and Star Citizen that we've seen come true? I would say that has a little to do with this right here and you, but but also this right here, which we all know. the banana fountain we got a nice long uh post here with aether drift who says i actually slightly disagree with you uh on ue uh, hold on one second on the ue5 thing with star atlas the difference is cr is a technical expert so when decisions had to be made on the direction of the game he was able to investigate uh he was able to navigate that to build his vision wagner is not as far as i know he is a finance guy because of that they have to be very careful about choice he makes ue5 is not a magic bullet that's a great comment aether uh, in, in portions, I, I agree with you, right? I agree that Wagner is no Chris Roberts. I agree with you on that. Uh, as, in terms of the UE5 and the, and the actual production, I disagree with you. I think that UE5 can pump out uh, assets quicker than the Star Engine amalgam that <clears throat> is uh, just the tech that UE5 brings to the table. I think in terms of creation, it has an edge on Star Engine, but I like it. I like what you said, Aether. I like what you said. I'm gonna applaud that here. I like that. And you know what? I, I like when people disagree with me. I, I like when people disagree with me. <laughs> I like that. I like that. DEF CON wants some Chipotle, just an update. Once I have more people buying the NFT ships, then they can keep on working on the game. Now the problem has been in the past that the price of the ships have tanked. And this is what the one of the big differences is between normal gaming and play to earn. In the play to earn model, you want to profit, all right? So it's not just about that. It's not just about the profit. Like it's owning it. It's play to own. Like there there's something that I'm I want to get out there, you know, like the reason why people are saying play to earn and not play and earn, by the way, it's me. I'm in a fountain. Uh, I just love hearing that sound effect. Delicious, delicious narcissism. It is me, though. Check the tape. Uh, you know, I was saying don't call this space play and earn. Call it or don't call this space play to earn, call it play and earn. Remember that? You remember these discussions we had many moons ago? I mean, many, many moons ago when we first started talking about the space and I said, this is like terribly marketed. Don't call this space play to earn. That makes you feel like you got to work to make money. It's bad. Call it play and earn. Now, everybody, even including Montoya, calling it play and earn. Now, I got to evolve things. I'm going to call it something new, something shiny, something different. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong. That was fan feedback. Wrong button. That was the button I was looking for. By the way, we forgot fan feedback. Remind me after this highlight. We got to go do some fan feedback. That's our fan feedback song. <laughs> I've forgotten where I was at. I had too much partying last night. 
what I'm showing you here is from uh, one of their... I've been keeping track of my own, owner. Is my own guild? thoughts. Are they called guilds in this game? A if Aether? anybody knows what I was talking about, uh, give me back And they've there. got a nice breakdown here of what <laughs> these ships they sold used to cost and what they're selling for right now. Show's now, going to hell now. a tradable token, the Atlas token itself, <laughs> is tradable. There's market fluctuations. When crypto's mm. in the bear market, the price of token... I remember what I was going to say. I updated it. The nomenclature, the vernacular... I updated it from play to earn to play and earn. Now I'm calling it something different. We're not calling it play and earn anymore. We're calling it play and own. Oh, you see how things evolve? You see how things evolve? When you own something that has value to it, it's not just about reselling it for X amount. It's actually that feeling of owning it because you do. It is a digital, tangible asset that you own. And you can laugh at that. You can say it's a nothing burger, but it will have value to it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because of the basic laws of the economy, the basic laws of supply and demand. If there are people willing to buy it, it has a value. And I can guarantee you in this space, there's going to be value. It might not be a lot. In some cases, it might be extreme. In other cases, it might not be enough to some people, but there will be value to all of this. And there's a difference with taking something and calling it play and earn and calling it play and own. And what do I mean by saying that? When you're in a play and earn environment, which I coined, by the way, what's happening is you are earning the crypto that you're playing, but you're also just kind of in that resell mode. You're just like, okay, I'm earning, I'm earning, I'm earning, here we go. But when you own something and you really take some time to think about owning something that has some value to it, sometimes you're not gonna wanna let that go because you own it. You have a wallet with that asset. Nobody can take it from you. It's yours. You are owning it. This isn't just a ship popping up in your hangar anymore inside of a game. This is something that you actually own. You can do with what, or you can trade it with other people. You can you can sell it, but you own it. So play and own. Thank you so much. That's what I want to say. Play and own. I'm in a fountain. The great part is the government can't take it from me. They can outlaw it. They can ban it. They can do all they want, but I have a wallet and it's secure and they can't touch it. And that's one of the reasons why I love it. That's one of the reasons why it's going to spread like wildfire because it's th the one thing that the government can't take from you. They can't. They physically can't do it. Technology has prevented them from being able to take it from you. You own it. That's why the crypto world is ablaze and shining bright. Will the government come in, Wookstree? Yes, they will. Will they overregulate? Yes, they will. They'll they'll botch things up like they normally do. That's the government. But they will never be able to take it away from you. That's why Bitcoin is is fucking owning it. Even even in this down market, it will eventually go back up again. And that's why it's here to stay. And and if America decides to to stamp their foot all over crypto, It'll move somewhere else. The epicenter of the world's economy will go from New York to another city in another country. Uh, that's how trading works. That's how big boy uh, markets work. That's how the economy works. It goes where the money is. It goes where the innovation is. It goes where the ideas are. That's what the market values most important. I didn't, I didn't value it that way. The market did. The collective group of people trading have deemed it valuable. Supply and demand. Supply and demand. Nope. No, nope. actually that that EMP thing is not correct, Kronos. You can get something called a Faraday bag, which shields things from EMP. You can put it in a cold storage wallet, as I have done, and put it in a Faraday bag. Uh, do it. Do it. Because then you're safe and you're secure. You don't even have to worry about EMP blasts or, or EMP discharges from the sun. Uh, you're safe from even a crazy solar flare. Just put your, your cold wallet, cold storage wallet, in a Faraday bag, uh, and you're safe. And you know your 12 keywords, your seed words, you memorize those. It's in your head. Nobody can take it away from you. Nobody. Token obviously goes down. When the market's pumping, the token will go up. But for the most part, it's been a very, very rough time for anyone who's bought these ships. So take a look at it the has. Pierce 
uh, X6, which already sold for $930, now selling for $140, 84% down. It gets worse. Yes. Here's one sold Ooh. for $33,000, which is the v Ballad, now uh, at $6,000. So you can see the- They got in at the hype. They got in at the top. They got in. I Hey, I did it too. I did it too. I'm one of those people that I'm down crazy big. Uh, but if you believe in these, again, not financial advice, just what I'm doing, is in certain, uh, some of these, I've, you put in the money that you feel like it's, first off, all the money that you put into it should be discretionary. It shouldn't be money that you're paying your bills with. It shouldn't be money that's important that you're using for your emergency fund. It should be only discretionary money. And you put it in the things that you research and you believe in. That is, that is the, the methodology here, Right. There are th these highs, these crazy highs that he's talking about, these fluctuations and the difference in prices because of what happened in the bear market, man. There are so many people that got burned out there. I feel so bad for them, but there, myself included. There are people that went in at the height of the mania of the craze at a 0% Fed funds rate, meaning no interest on the money given. Money was floating around like crazy. The amount of money that was printed was half of the amount ever created in the entirety of America's existence and pushed out to the public. Crazy, 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 crazy that that even happened. And now it's drying up. You're seeing it. Things are getting more expensive. Inflation is getting higher. The Fed's raising the fund rate. Money is getting harder to get. <laughs> like people are literally like, holy shit, right? It's part of the bear market cycle. It's part of the cycle. It's part of the cycle. It cuts out the people that that aren't professional enough to survive, that, that don't have the wherewithal to get through it. And that's what the market does. The market regulates itself. The beauty of the market itself is something intangible. I can't even properly describe it to you guys. The market is a masterpiece. The market, capitalism, there's, there's something about it that's just musical. It's it's like looking when I when I look at a chart, there's something happens to me. It's literally tangible greed and fear. You can see the greed, you can see the fear. And we just came out of one of the biggest, biggest multi year bull runs ever because of how the government recklessly, recklessly managed. The market, because they, they did it. They did it. They did a horrible job. I think Jerome Powell's doing the best he can do, but I really think they kind of like, they're botching everything up right now. The problem here, the problem here is if you spent $90,000 yeah. on the Pierce C11, <laughs> uh, it's now going for $19,000. You're taking uh. a very serious loss here. Uh, let's go something a bit more tangible, which is the the food. Also, also, I have to say, if you're spending ninety thousand dollars on a ship, you're probably a millionaire. I, I couldn't imagine a guy with ninety thousand dollars in his bank account is going to just splurge ninety thousand dollars on a on a spaceship in a video game, man. You know, I get this that you're owning it, that it goes to a wallet, but I can't ever justify buying a ninety thousand dollar spaceship. Just. I think what we're dealing with primarily here are very, very rich people that have the ability to buy a $90,000 spaceship. I'm sure one exists, right, man? So there's one guy, there's one guy out there, <laughs> right, that shoved it all in. And I feel so bad for those people. I feel so bad for those people. Oh, my God. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that? I mean, also very stupid, though. Also very stupid. So I will throw a little shame bell in that too. I mean, like if there, there's got to be one guy out there that did that. And dude, if you're watching, I got to shame you, dude. Never do that again. Let's publicly shame this guy or, or girl. Shame. Shaming you properly shame. as you should be shamed. Shame. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be a sheeple. Don't be a sheeple. Rumble Airbike. Now I have friends who bought this because they want to try it out. They paid 20 bucks at the time. I think it's 16 15 now. Now selling for two bucks. The problem is here, <laughs> there are real world economics at play. And I don't have the answer for you on this topic. You know how I feel about play to earn. I feel play to earn is a crypto. Okay, I can't wait to hear how he's going to respond to that. Hold on, let's see. What crypto bros dream. Crypto bros love the idea. I don't agree. Gamers, not so much. I don't know. I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I'm going to tell you why. I don't agree because if I have the option to have fun and own something, 
why not? I, I, I feel like this is a like I feel like this is a natural response as a gamer. Like I, I don't know. I don't know why this would make me a crypto bro. Like I think if I can have fun, right, and and play a game and own something, right, that has some tangible value that could make my life cool, you know, maybe I can buy a combo meal with it. Maybe I could do something with it. Like if I could do that, that's just another layer of utility. That's just another layer of awesome to a video game. Like I think the crypto bros thing is is there to just like be a meme meme. It's meme. You know what I mean? On the real, like I think it would be very cool to have fun. I, I think people like the, the people who approach me who have arguments that say, Oh, DG, uh, this space is filled filled with scam Oz's and scammers. I get it. There are. There's plenty out there and it's it's very hard to discern which ones are, are gonna be legit projects and which ones aren't. But I think the people that come to me and approach me with these arguments about, oh, like crypto in itself, I'm not quite sure about it. It's probably all bad. Like it, they, I feel like that's so generalized. Uh, and I feel that's a very basic thing to say and, and very uneducated just to lump people into like, oh, well, they're not real great gamers. They're just, they're just, they're just crypto bros. It's like, no, no, I, I would love to be able, uh, the other argument I see is the other argument I see is like people go, oh, well, it's a job. Oh, well, it's a job. Oh, no, no. I mean, some people are going to treat it that way. Right. But no, no, I could never take it to that, that, that point. Um, I'm just like a, a fun, chill dude that wants to play video games that wants to own stuff in a video game. What's, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Uh, and, and I'm not going to treat it like work. It's a fucking game. It's a game with benefits. Like, I'm like, like really this narrative that's been passed down. I, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. I don't subscribe to that. It's too easy. It's too simplistic. It, 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 it's too simplistic to say something like that and get behind it and go, yeah, yeah, crypto bros, man. You know, like it just, it's too easy. I don't like things that, that, that have that too easy smell to it. I just don't like it. <laughs> and you need gamers to play your games. Now, I don't want to be stuck in the past and say, okay, this is going to be the future and I'm just wrong about this. But for the most part, people play games to get away from the stress of this kind of exact issue. But are there people out there that do want to earn money from playing their games? They are, but are they enough to make things work also? So look, there's a lot of unknowns about this. And my criticism for Star Atlas is the play to earn model, I'm not sure about. I'm not sure about people coming in the game because they just want to earn money. It's not that the only model reason. is shaky at I, I, I don't think that's I think that's I don't know. I don't agree with them with that because it, it's a very it's a very basic view of the space. There's so much depth to this of what it could be. I don't agree with them on that. Like there, there's so much more to it than just that. Like I feel like he's just taking the surface. Best. Take a look at what happened to Axie Infinity, which was a stupid mobile game, and uh, you get these little creatures, and the creatures fight each other. Implosion, it, total implosion, a disaster. Yeah, this is the absolutely. one maybe you heard in the news, like kids from the. F I mean, here's the thing, though, right? I mean, it's really dependent upon where you got in, right? Say, say, let's just say this, right? This is part of cycles. Let's say you're on this side of the that really horrible chart. Let's say you're all the way over to the far right. Let's say you're just now learning about this, right? It's all perspective, right? <laughs> like it's all perspective. Will it ever get back to that again? I don't know. Probably not. If it if it does, it's going to take a long time, I think. It's going to take years. If it does. And the and there will be projects that may get back to their all-time highs because they're they have the utility. The way to tell the way to tell a really good uh project out there, because all of these are projects, all these have some type of utility. All the blockchains out there have some different type of utility. They're all online, they're all ledgers. You can see what's going on, no third party attached to it. That's the cool thing about blockchain. But your perspective on on this is basically where you're at. If you're if you bought here or there or there, ouch, you're you're having a hard time, right? Unless you're a staunch believer, right? But if you're on the other side of this giant massive hype spike, and you're getting in right now, and it, it, it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all, <laughs> unless it tanks to nothing, right? So I think I think we got to add a little perspective in that.
Philippines were grinding at it for to make a dollar a day. And you guys really the hate money Star you Atlas. earn in the game, <laughs> and it's going to be the same in Star Atlas here. The money you earn in Star Atlas is exchangeable for real world currency. All, most of the now, if it's exchangeable for real world, real world currency, yeah. there's going to be supply and demand. Now, if there's yeah. more supply of the token than demand for the token, price goes down. Yes, right. If price goes down, are you willing to spend an hour, two hours a day playing the game if you're not going to be making your dollar? Say you're going to be making 10 cents. Is it worth your time to log in for 10 uh, Is it worth it if it goes up? I mean, this is this is like a weird argument. You know, like this is, this is basic supply and demand, right? This is basic supply and demand. It's all cyclical. It's all cyclical. It goes up. It goes down. It goes up. It goes down. Welcome to the market. And it says, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of unknowns. Yes, I agree with but, that. But uh, what I want to leave you with on this topic is this. Uh, I know I said the project is dead. But now, He's gonna if they keep on pulling in a million a month. He's going to change his tune. Listen, I'm shaming Montoya right now. He knows what he did. He jumped on the hype wagon. He jumped on that clickety clack. He jumped on Star Atlas's dead title. You did. You did, dude. You did. But Shame. I'm glad. I'm glad he's Shame. saying <laughs> Shame. it's mostly dead. He's changing it from dead to mostly dead. <laughs> it's just mostly dead, <laughs> right? It is. I have no problem doing that. I have no problem saying that at all. Uh, there's he's a lot right, of challenges right. still ahead of them. It's still and uh, they, even bringing they, them. They've got so much ahead of them. They've got so much ahead of them. They're gonna have to pump out so much. So like the the positive out of this fucking craziness is that. Star Atlas now has to produce. They have to really seriously produce here. And that's great. And if they do that, which they are, I'm seeing more content. I'm seeing more ships out there. They have to. They got a fire lit under their ass. Keep doing it. The people at Star Atlas, listen, I might not agree with Michael Wagner, <laughs> the, 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 uh, his conduct, uh, very ungentlemanly with my friend, the Eradicator, not, not becoming of a CEO, right? But in terms of Web3, in terms of this space, I still think for the money, Star Atlas is is my best bet for a Web3 game that'll break through and make it. If they can get through this bear market and survive and come out the other side, good for them. Good for them. It means they can do it. Uh, but this is, this is definitely, definitely rough waters right now. This is a test by fire. And uh, if they come out the other side of this, Good for them. Keep on doing what you're doing, guys. Listen, the devs, the real people that are working on this, the people that are in Star Atlas, the freelancers, right? The people that are actually doing the work, all of you guys together. I don't I don't want you to be disheartened. Like there are real people working on this, making money to feed their families, right? I mean, like, let's be really real about this. When these people see some of the comments in here, right? And I get it. I understand where people are coming from in here. The the hatred, the 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 visceral hatred, right? It's because of all the money lost. It's because of this pop of this balloon. I get that. I understand that. People got to get that out. They got to get that out. In terms of the business, it's it made me a little scared to hear that they lost that much money. Again, that's not what I want from a CEO, right? However, even under those circumstances, it's one of the only projects, the Web3 projects that I see that are they're being this transparent and the scope is somewhat large and it's using blockchain and I love that. And I love the play to own space and I am rooting for someone in this industry to do it. Will it be Star Atlas? I don't know. There's going to be a winner. There will eventually be a winner. The winner's going to be the people that focus on the game. How many times have I said this? And when, when we talk about Star Atlas, this is the biggest problem they have, this disconnect where, where people cannot connect to it because we're gamers. We're coming to a game. We want to have fun. We want to make sure that the focus is on the fun. Let's be real here. And I still feel like they're focusing on financials. I still feel like they're just focusing on the blockchain web three aspects of it and not just the actual playing of the game. And that's a huge disconnect that's out there. And so again, I say this, I've talked to the community manager. I said, listen, guys, you have to show us what's going on. You have to show us the people that are working here. You ha we have to see the legitimate business behind this. If these are people working remotely or if you're in an office, we have to see that. I still really haven't seen it. They've done a couple videos where they brought people on, you know, in kind of like a community format. 
Uh, but I want like a really well edited, put together video where they're talking to people who are actually real people creating something. And when you have real people making, surviving off of these paychecks that are creating something, it's got to be devastating to read some of these comments. It's got to be disheartening to read a lot of these comments. I'm a, I'm a dude who's been covering game development for over a decade, okay? In game development, what I try to do, or, or covering game, game development, what I try to do is I try to portray both sides. I try to portray the gamer's aspect and their view and their perception, and I try to encapsulate what it is the de developers are feeling. I want, I want there to be a mutual respect between the gamers and the developers. That is paramount to a successful game. That relationship is, I think, one of the most important relationships in the gaming world is the relationship between the gamer and the developer. And I have to say, I feel real bad for these developers that are watching comments that are basically saying that Star Atlas is a scam, that Star Atlas is bullshit, that it's all scamazi, that the, 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 the fuck it, it's crypto, crypto bros, all this shit. Because I feel bad for those developers that are actually doing the work and and putting this out there for people and then this is the feedback that they're getting i want to be more constructive i want to be a constructive channel helping these developers out to navigate to help them navigate it's crazy that me a simple content creator uh, a simple <laughs> uh content creator that focuses on game development uh sometimes knows more than the people actually creating the game in terms of like how to market it how to put this out there um, and, and how to run and operate a business. But I love that aspect as well. I love uh, the financial business aspect to it too, which is why I gravitate to Web3. I'm a gamer dude that trades. I'm a trader dude that games. I think I'm bringing something different to the mix. I like what Montoya is doing because he's talking about financials and business more. I dig that. Uh, he's got a lot of really good points here. Uh, I disagree with him on a couple things, but I respect what it is that he's doing. And uh, I actually love watching Montoya videos that cover Star Atlas. I love when he talks about financials. Uh, he's an adult who knows what he's talking about. He understands the financial world. I will continue to watch videos like this. And uh, you don't see a lot of content creators out there who are brave enough or have the balls enough or who know enough about this topic. And when I listen to Montoya, I'm like, okay, this dude actually knows a lot. This is somebody who I can view that, you know, me understanding the world of, of, of the, the uh, economics, the market, somebody who's been doing this for 15 plus years. When I listen to him talk, he knows what he's talking about. There's a lot of people out there that pretend that don't know what they're talking about that don't have a clue in this space. But Montoya is somebody that does. So Montoya, keep up the good work. I really appreciate these videos. And thanks, guys, for, for bringing this video to my attention. I think we've talked Star Atlas till I'm blue in the face. Let's get to the next video. Oh, my God. Okay, Pepe, Pepe.